Over the next half an hour, we're going to take you on a trip you'll never forget, one that spans time and space, and to the farthest reaches of the universe. These aren't just ordinary pictures of the cosmos, they are some of the most extraordinary images ever seen by humankind. And to truly grasp their depth, complexity, and sheer awe-inspiring existence, one has to view them through the eyes of the James Webb Space Telescope. This engineering and scientific marvel has, yet again, stretched the very boundaries of what we know. Not only has it extended our sight, but has transformed our understanding of the universe's earliest days. Just recently, Webb set its sights on an area at the outermost limits of the observable universe, a point from which light has traveled more than 13.5 billion years to even reach us. The findings are nothing short of stunning. These newly obtained images and associated data are more than scientific benchmarks. They are a paradigm shift, a titanic step in our attempt to know where we come from, and how the first stars, galaxies, and structures came into being. The universe Webb is showing us is not cold and lifeless, it's alive, chaotic, surprisingly mature, and way more complex than we ever had the temerity to imagine. Astronomers have long hypothesized about what is at the boundary of the observable universe for decades. This limit is not a physical wall, but one set by the oldest light that has had sufficient time to travel to Earth since the beginning of the universe. The Hubble Space Telescope, itself a groundbreaking tool, gave us tantalizing views of this early universe. But it did not have infrared sensitivity and mirror size to cut through the dense mantle of cosmic dust or see the thinnest, most distant light. That is where James Webb shines. Equipped with a huge 6.5 meter primary mirror and the most advanced infrared detectors ever put into orbit, Webb was designed specifically to look deeper into space and more distant back in time than any previous telescope. One of the most daring surveys it ever conducted, Webb homed in on a smudge of sky in the Fornax constellation, a seemingly blank space. But after weeks of capturing light, what came from that darkness left scientists around the world agog. Webb had revealed a collection of ancient galaxies, some of them potentially some of the very first ever created. These galaxies were tiny, compact, and softly glowing with the redshifted light of over 13.5 billion years. Cosmically, these are remnants from the Cosmic Dawn era, when the universe changed from darkness to light and when the first galaxies and stars flared into being. What makes these discoveries so remarkable isn't so much the age of the galaxies, it's how they appear. According to our current models of cosmology, these early galaxies should be small, irregular, and dim, struggling to accumulate enough mass to form stars. Yet the galaxies observed by Webb defy this expectation. They appear far more massive and luminous than previously predicted, some containing stars at a rate hundreds of times faster than our own Milky Way. This starburst-like formation of stars in the early universe indicates that the early cosmos was much more active and mature than anyone had ever expected. It is a basic challenge to the conventional model of cosmology and raises challenging new questions. Was the early universe star formation fueled by unseen forces? Are we getting dark matter and cosmic inflation wrong? May the Big Bang itself have progressed differently than we suppose? One of the most exciting findings was a cluster of very red-shifted galaxies, objects whose light has been pulled into the infrared by the universe's expansion. These are not just old, they're unlike anything else. Some seem to have supermassive black holes already installed in their centers. This finding is uncharacteristically baffling. By standard theory, supermassive black holes take billions of years to grow to enough mass through mergers and accretion. And yet there they are, just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. That opens up the possibility that black holes in the early universe did not occur through processes very similar to what we know today, maybe collapsing straight from massive gas clouds or through other esoteric mechanisms as yet unknown. Adding yet more gravity to this cosmic enigma, Webb has found spectral signatures of elements such as carbon, oxygen, and potentially even nitrogen in these early galaxies. The first stars that formed according to standard cosmology were the population three stars, which were made up nearly exclusively of hydrogen and helium, the only elements produced in the immediate wake of the Big Bang. Heavier elements, or metals in astrophysics, were believed to be formed later in supernovae. 
The existence of such elements in galaxies so early in the history of the universe implies that at least one generation of stars should already have lived and died, packing what should be hundreds of millions of years of stellar evolution into a cosmically short time. This presents severe challenges to existing astrophysical models. But the shocks are not over yet. Webb's ultra-deep field exposures show us that these old galaxies are not spaced at random. They are embedded in a fragile, interconnected web, an early incarnation of the cosmic web. This cosmic web is a huge structure composed of filaments and voids of galaxies and dark matter that gives the universe its large-scale design. Scientists believed such structures took billions of years to evolve, yet Webb shows that the seeds of this cosmic scaffolding were already germinating in the universe's infancy. This forces a reevaluation of our simulations of the early universe and suggests that gravitational clustering and dark matter may have worked in ways we're only beginning to grasp. Another revolutionary part of Webb's findings is in the observation of ionized hydrogen and helium, major signals of the era of reionization. This period, which happened a few hundred million years after the Big Bang, is the time when the universe emerged as transparent to light. Earlier, the universe contained a thick haze of neutral hydrogen that obstructed photons. The creation of the initial stars and galaxies reionized this gas, in effect removing the cosmic curtain and permitting light to travel unimpeded. This process had been largely conjectural up until now. But Webb's capability to discern galaxies that could have been responsible for this reionization provides the first direct observational sign of this pivotal cosmic benchmark. Maybe the deepest consequence of Webb's mission is that it challenges one of cosmology's longest-held assumptions that the universe is isotropic and homogeneous on the biggest scales. When the standard model does average the universe to be uniform over huge distances, Webb's deep field images suggest tiny asymmetries in galaxy construction and element distribution. Could they be echoes of quantum fluctuations in the early universe? Or could they suggest as yet unknown physical processes that occurred in the universe's first instance? These are not merely intellectual curiosities, they attack the most treasured tenets of cosmology. Even more provocatively, Webb's unprecedented reach has set off new speculation on what exists outside the observable universe. If we can now observe galaxies that existed only a few hundred million years after the Big Bang, what else may be out there, just beyond our reach? Could more powerful machines see evidence of a pre-Big Bang universe? Could we see a multiverse or extra dimensions that influenced how our universe developed? A few physicists have even suggested that tiny patterns in the cosmic microwave background radiation may carry messages, clues from a previous cosmic cycle or even another universe. Speculative as these ideas are, they are being looked at with fresh interest in the light of the enigma's web is revealing. Let us not lose sight of the poetic aspect of this venture. The light gathered by Webb set out more than 13.5 billion years ago. Since then, civilizations have come and gone on Earth. Stars have lived and died. Galaxies have collided. And yet, through all of that expanse of distance and time, those photons passed untouched, silent witnesses to the creation throes of the universe. To view them now, so clearly, is to partake of a form of cosmic archaeology. It is a testament not just to human technological ingenuity, but to our unending desire to know where we are from, and maybe, where we're headed. The technology that enables it to do so is one of wonder itself. Webb follows the sun almost a million miles away from Earth, in a steady orbit called L2. There, protected from the radiation of the sun by a giant sun shield and chilled to close to absolute zero, its detectors can sense the most minute glints of light from long ago. Its position and stability are so fine that it can keep a single spot on the sky locked for days or weeks, gathering data with unprecedented resolution. The coordination demanded among ground control, data analysts, cosmologists, and engineers is stunning in its sophistication, and still, it functions seamlessly. And the revelations keep coming. Scientists poring over the data have already started to see hints of gravitational lensing, where the mass of intervening galaxies warps and amplifies the light of background sources. This natural amplification enables Webb to gaze deeper, spotting galaxies and star clusters that would otherwise be undetectable. 
the most thrilling theories propose that we might ultimately be able to observe individual population three stars, such old and massive objects that they would change our understanding of stellar evolution. What is so thrilling about this moment is not just that we're looking farther than we've ever looked. It's that what we're looking at doesn't match up with what we thought we'd see. The James Webb Space Telescope hasn't just confirmed our hypotheses, it's shattered them. It's posing questions we weren't ready for, and revealing to us a universe that's more dynamic, more ordered, and more enigmatic than we ever dreamed. If you enjoyed this trip as much as we did, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and let us know what you think in the comments. What do you think is out beyond the observable universe? How do you see Webb's discoveries? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Until next time, keep looking up.